Welcome to Networking Field Day 14. We are here at Juniper Networks. The presentation that you are about to watch is being attended by an invited group of delegates who are here to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions about the technology and solutions that Juniper will present. If you'd like to learn more about this event, go to our website at techfieldday.com. Check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning and letting us present uh, what we've been doing so far, where, where are we going. Uh, my name is Nitin Kumar. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Architecture for all Juniper products across routing, switching, cloud, and security. Um, the Vice President role is relatively new for me. I've been an engineer all my life here at Juniper. So I really have a, a perspective of how products are built here, what we've done. I've written a lot of code at Juniper. So what I want to do today when, um, is give you my perspective as an engineer as to what is driving our software development strategy, right? Guru and team are going to be giving you <coughs> more details and demos as to the actual products. I want to set it up by just giving you the philosophy, like what's, because we have a large organization, a large software team. You have to give them some direction as to where to go because you can realize that we've been in an embedded a networking equipment company for a long time, right? We started in 96, and things are not really the same. The, the development environment is not the same as it used to be. So we've changed, and this change hasn't happened overnight. It, it started a long time ago, and it's, and it's a journey. Uh, I want to give you what we are thinking, right? So that's, um, that's my kickoff, um, and Guru is going to be talking more details. This is the agenda. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, software development strategy, and then we're going to go into automation, uh, streaming telemetry, open config. Uh, all the demos are going to be done after that. So, so what's driving software? I have to say that uh, if something has changed uh, our experiences over the last few years, it is, it is cloud. So Juniper wants to be as uh, agile. We want to be cloud. But what does that mean? Because it's, it's a very nebulous goal. Uh, it has to be actionable. So I want to share with you what we are doing to get to be what cloud is. But cloud really is not uh, taking all your software and running it into servers. People think that, that for a networking company, that is the end goal. Virtualize what you have. If you're building routers, if you're building switches, just virtualize them, create the software, and run on servers. That really is not it. It's a key part of what needs to be done, but it's not the, it's not the end goal. So I, as an engineer, have distilled the cloud uh, methodology into three things, and I'm going to relate that to what we're doing. There could be more things that people think around cloud, but in my mind, these are three things. Flexibility, elasticity, and a community. What do I mean by flexibility? Any product which is cloud-enabled is really geared around the user. It, the product really morphs itself into what the user wants. If you want the thing on your, on your desktop, it's there. If you want it on your a mobile phone, it's there. The, the product moves around the user. It's really flexible. As opposed to traditional networking equipment, it's, it's really very hard to use sometimes. So that's the, that's the context. The, from a design perspective, anything that is built for the cloud is very elastic. What, what I mean by that is the, there is only one design principle. You build something, and the scaling characteristic of that thing depends on the resources available. So your design does not change. You don't have to design one thing to scale up to 10 units or design something else to scale up to 100 units. It doesn't matter. So from a development perspective, it's very powerful, this philosophy that you design once, and depending upon how much of resources available, the, the product scales out, right? That's the fundamental design principle across all cloud products. And then the third thing, which is very important, is a sense of community. Any, any product, is, there's so much emphasis on code that is written by individuals that don't belong to your organization. It's, it's the key philosophy of how software is written today. Yes, there are products made by individual companies and they support and sell them, but in the development life cycle of that product, they leverage a lot of work that is done by the community out there, right? They're, the open source is another name for it. So basic, basic utilities are never developed. One, one person develops it, somebody else takes it, adds on to it, incorporates them in, 
in, incorporates that into their workflow, builds on it, contributes it back to the community, somebody else takes it. So the, the organizational boundaries have disappeared. And, and that is very powerful. So our goal really is, I want to be agile like the cloud and embrace these principles. And, what, and if I were to summarize everything on one slide, this is it. There are four parts to it. First is, our, syst we have to become, our system has to become more modular. I'll talk a little more about it. It cannot be one big system. It has to be broken down into smaller components. That's modularity. The scale-out design. The elasticity that I talked about, our systems, our software, our silicon, everything has to embrace uh, scale out. You take X and you scale it out to Y and that's it. You, you get a multiplying effect. And then we have to, we are investing in an ecosystem beyond Juniper. We write a lot of code. Uh, traditionally, we've written all our code ourselves. This does not work because the, the innovation that is being done outside Juniper, we want to leverage that into our products and make our products better. So we need to have an ecosystem beyond Juniper. And then finally, we, we really tr want to build software and applications that are not hardware centric, right? We, we, we built boxes all our life. We know them, how to do that very well, but we want to get into true software development. And we're doing it in multiple ways. We've acquired companies like Wandel and Contrail, what true software stacks. And we're building on top of that, coming in and building more orchestration systems, more controllers, and Guru's gonna be talking more about that as to our vision of the network is, is almost like a self-driving car, a self-driving <laughs> network. It operates on its own, and there is a controller which manages the network and has got all insights about the network. It reacts to events, and so it, so the, so everything is automated and there is minimal in intervention that a, a human has to do in running a network, right? So let me just give us a little more detail as to what I mean by modularity and this goes into the theme of, uh, theme of the presentation <coughs> coming on. Our system traditionally has been a monolithic system. There are internal components, but as far as the external world sees it, it's one big blob and there are APIs that are, that are exposed, SNMP, routing, uh, management APIs, but there's one pipe that goes into the system. What we have been doing, we started on this two, three years ago, is truly break up the system into subcomponents. And so the big blue blob is replaced by these small blocks. And that's good, but the most important part, part about decomposing these blocks is, you see these yellow lines al around these blocks? There are durable APIs that are present uh, uh, around these blocks. These APIs are designed in such a way that all our internal components talk to each other <coughs> using these, uh, these APIs, which is good, but anything that we expose to the outside world is exactly the same API. Because remember the goal uh, that I had is we want to start leveraging an ecosystem beyond Juniper, so we want to make sure that our components interact with each other in exactly the same fashion as these components interact with the outside world. So if, if there is a developer ecosystem out there shown in green over here and they want to talk to our components, they use exactly the same APIs that our developers are using, which means that the interface that the rest of the world sees is as durable as the interface our own developer sees. So, so it's like, so the, the sense of, so the, the total number of people developing for this product fundamentally increases. You have people inside Juniper writing software, and you have developers from the community writing software. And, and, and Guru is going to be going over more details as to what our API infrastructure is. Just a, um, just a specific example as to how we're leveraging the ecosystem uh, that, uh, that others are using. We, are, we have adopted uh, technologies that Google has developed. Google has developed an RPC framework called gRPC. We've taken on that. We actually use it inside our products and we use it uh, externally as well. Uh, Google uses protocol buffers for uh, encoding and decoding data being sent out from the routers. We use that. Contrail is actually open sourced. Uh, open Contrail <coughs> is that product and developers outside Juniper contribute to Contrail and uh, the product improves fundamentally. And you're gonna see more examples of this uh, in, the, in the presentation uh, later on. So what I, I really wanna set up uh, and set up the rest of the presentations is, if you see, um, 
agility in a system and the efficiency in a system, these are op opposing forces. If you want to make a system more efficient, it will not be very agile because you have to develop custom interfaces, you have to optimize a lot. So you would be sliding on this curve. If you make it more agile, uh, it would effectively become less efficient. So, and this is just physics, you really cannot help it. Uh, if you make it more efficient, it becomes less agile. If you make it more agile, it becomes less efficient. So you'll always be sliding this curve up and down. What we want to do, what the work that we've been we, we've been doing for a long time and what we want to keep doing is move this curve up to the right, right? So that yes, you still have this property of sliding up and down the curve, but the curve ships up to the right. So effectively you make better systems, more efficient systems, and they're agile at the same time, right? I know this sounds very high level. The presentations uh, um, that are going to be following will prove this point to you, that how are we actually achieving this? Thank you. Thanks. Cool. Thank, you. Thank you. Level set. Do you have any questions for me? I had one question. What is cloudification? Where did, is that yours? Is that your stuff? Because I love that word. Um, so <laughs> it's a noun that we say, I said to start with that I want to be cloud, right? Yeah. Now, you have to make it a, into a verb. So I want to cloudify the stuff that I do yeah. and participate in the cloud. And you can realize it's a little hard for a vendor company like us. We started as a vendor. So we are those boxes sitting down and the cloud is on top of us. We want to change that, yeah. right? Well, we, we do boxes, but we do cloud as well. Yeah, I just love to see cloudification on a t-shirt. That'd be great. That's, that's a great, I like <laughs> the term. Good, good it's feedback. an uh, intermediary uh, step to cloudomation. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cloud cloudomation. Ooh. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, I think I hurt Grant pending. Uh, pending. Well, I think I'm just going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suddenly yeah. feeling so, nauseous. I got a question. So, yeah. so you, you, you're, you're taking your monolithic you know, development approach, you're splitting yeah. it up and yes. into different, uh, you know, I'm going to call them microservices, we'll get there in a minute right. and talk about what they are. But is that reflective in the company as well? I mean, yes. are you redefining and realigning your teams to, yes. to be more agile? And, yes. Okay. If I, if I, I probably cannot share that email that was sent out by a chief development officer that we have to do this. If we do not do this, uh, we're going to die, right? And, and that, that, that happened about a year or a couple of years ago. It's not an easy shift. I'm not going to lie to you, right? It's hard because our software is, was started in 96, so things organically grow. So we've had to take a pause on software development and actually redo a lot of stuff. And before we see fruits of this, it'll take some time. So we're just doing small things. And for example, uh, we've developed the capability of upgrading just the hardware without changing the OS of the box, just like you do for drivers on your, on your PC, right? We've done that. Uh, the telemetry stuff that Guru is going to be talking about, the telemetry package is separate from the Junos package. So if you want more telemetry, you can just upgrade your package and it'll keep working. All of that is possible because the telemetry interface into the Juniper OS is exactly, remains durable. It is, it, it is protected by robust APIs and that's how we can keep upgrading the package independently.